Welcome back you lovely people on another video of what to do with sprue. Right, in this video, some of you who've watched the previous videos may recognise this piece. And I did set the time, I never chuck anything away. I mentioned briefly about making gantries. So, gantries and walkways for sci-fi, like industrial buildings, things like that. Sprue is excellent for them. So we'll start off with a small piece. So I will just do a weird and wonderful shape and show you how you can use that to make a walkway. So first things first, I'll get this one out of the way and we'll come back to this one in a bit. There's two different ways that you can do this. So a nice chopping board here so I don't lop off my hands or probably won't lop off my hands. Uh, so the first way is see patterns in a sprue. So I see a pattern there, it's a nice little walkway. That's a bigger walkway, I'm going to go with that one there. That one there is fantastic and everything, but for the scale I'm using for a regular sci-fi model, that would be better for me. That there is fine, but that looks a bit bigger. So you see a pattern of something in a straight line-ish. So that's slight crook to it, not a problem. And you think that would be nice for a little gantry or walkway or something like that. It's totally fine, it's up to you. I said there's two ways of doing it because the first way involves this stuff. So this is a very, very fine mesh, very flimsy, ultra pliable. Uh, I got this from a body shop kit, so I uh, went to a, a GP like pound store and for body repairs they have some of this, you get a bit of fiberglass, you get filler, things like that. Um, also ask your friendly mechanic, you might have something like it, or you can use an old sieve possibly, or something like that. So the, the little hatching in it is probably 2 mil, so it's quite fine. So once cut out, you can wrap around that. The reason that I think this side is probably about your limit is if you wrap it, you think something fairly heavy would land in the center could possibly damage it. So you don't really want anything bigger than that kind of size because this stuff is fairly flimsy. So even though you may wrap it around, if you drop something heavy, it could donk. That is pretty safe, that's probably pushing your luck, but I will use this side to show you what I mean anyway. And the other way you can do it, I said there's two ways you can do it, is something along the lines of this size. Now this size, you definitely wouldn't use this, because if something landed in the center, it probably would damage it pretty badly. Unless you want it damaged looking, that's fine. But you can always cut out a few sprue pieces like this, and stick in between to make it stronger, so a nice ladder section. But you can also use what they call granny grading or plastic cross stitch mesh or whatever you guys call it if you're in the States, it's a different different name. And it's a lot, lot bigger and a lot more durable. So if a model landed there, less likely to break and go through. But if you've got smaller models, you might think that that scale is possibly incorrect. So that's probably what, four mil, so it's twice the size hole. And you think the scale of it, this guy is human, it's about half the size of his foot, you know, that's a pretty big hole. It wouldn't be massively realistic. So I'm gonna skip the granny grading on the bigger section, but you get the gist, and I will use the smaller section with the fine mesh. So I'll cut this out here. I mean, most of you know how to cut off sprue, but yeah, cut away from yourself, apply constant even pressure, I don't have to tell you how to cut, and I'll come back after I've cut this piece out and show you what I mean. So once you cut your basic shape off the rest of the sprue, then you want to start cleaning it up. What I mean by this, I mean getting rid of all these little knobbly pieces, like if you've seen any of the previous videos I've done, how to clean up sprue, you know, it's fairly straightforward. No, just I'll cut that off, make life easier for myself, eh? 
So I'm not slicing like that because that's when I can slip. If I'm cutting down, I know it seems very exaggerated me doing this, but it's a gentle even pressure. If I'm slicing, then I can slip and get my hands. You know, so what I'm doing is, it may look like I'm stabbing something, but I'm just rocking it backwards and forwards in an almost like sawing motion, nice and gently. I'm just cutting off all the little nimbly bits. And I'm going to do the whole lot, including these, and the little round segments. And then maybe run some sandpaper over it. Okay, so when you cut out your basic shape, then you cut off any little knobbly bits, that's a very technical term, knobbly bits. Um, you can choose to sandpaper it off, or scrape it off, make it look a bit smoother. I like to make it look a bit beaten and rustic. So get rid of all the little knobbly bits. What I'm going to do next is pick a direction because remember, a sprue often is angled. So I'm going to pick it so it's angled down. And I'm going to stick this on top, then trim it. It just makes life easier when the glue is fully set to trim it because obviously it's quite flexible when you trim it now. It's not very rigid, so you could pull it and tear it, do some real damage. And plus, it looks neater after you stick it on, then trim it. So that's what I'll do next. I'll get some super glue and I'll place it on and then come back after the glue is drying, all ready for the trimmage, if that's even a word. Once you have stuck whatever uh, mesh you're going to use on your gantry down, like so, I would recommend using scissors because it's nice and soft, this stuff, rather than using a knife, purely because a knife, when dragged along, will drag and start misshaping. So you want a nice clean cut. So I'm going to cut roughly around. And when that's done, I'm going to neaten it up. So stuff, like I said, is really easy to cut. Look at that. No worries. Keep that because Ross never throws away anything. Oh yeah. It's quite useful. And even little bits like that I might cut, because not only am I tight, uh, it's great to put on a little bit of base. Just to add a little bit of something to it, especially on orc bases, they look great. So, cutting as nittily as I can. Just tighten it up there, look good. This is where I cut my fingers. And if you're ever unsure, and you're a youngster, make sure you get an adult to help you. Um, I have a mind of a youngster, and sadly there's no adults around. I have to make do with me. So I'm just going to tidy up. A little bit off there. Come back in a minute when it's all tidied up. Okay, so once everything's trimmed out nicely, make it as neat as you want. In fact, for me, that's possibly a tad too neat. So what I'm going to do is just make a little tear and push the mesh a little bit so it looks like there's been a bit of damage there, like so. You mean you do that in a few places if you like, make it as bean as you want, but that is enough for me, it's just a little bit of damage. And then use, and I'm using a nice cheap rattle can, cost me about a pound, purely because whatever paint I'm gonna use is probably not gonna cope very well with the metal. So it's nice to prime it up. It doesn't matter if you're using acrylic paints or enamel paints, it's always nice to seal it first. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well ventilated area, and if you notice, Cardboard. So this is just a cardboard box that I have cut three sides off. So I've got three sides remaining. So I've got a little bit of a spray booth. Uh, would cut only two sides, but it's nice to cut and get to stuff sometimes. So I'm just going to spray it up. Like so. And then flip it over in a minute. And do the same on the other side. Okay, so once primed up. 
it's time for the paint. So I'm going to use a bit of classic silver. Yeah, no one saw that coming, did they? A silver gantry. That's going to look a bit boring, a bit plain, isn't it? Well, hopefully that adds some rust to it. It looks pretty good. So just working in there using an old big brush that I like to use for terrain. And you could do some crazy colors to this. Uh, some nice blues or maybe the good old um, check plate kind of yellow and black danger area striping. It's always nice to see on some industrial terrain. How you could always get a bit crazy and use a color that no one normally uses. Perfectly clean gantry, sprayed blue or something. Well maintained. Now I'm gonna say this is a bit more of an orky, maybe an industrial looking piece of terrain. So I'm gonna make it look as rough as possible. Get a bit of silver, just rubbing it on my palette there. And this heat paint dries pretty quickly. So pretty basic, pretty boring. And then we're gonna make it look rusty. So wash my brush off. Um, what I like to do is a bit of sterling mud in a separate pot, add a bit of water to it, gives it a nice bit of texture. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Very big brush. Add some water to it. Because I left it fairly thin last time, but so it's a smack the camera. It's a bit of a liquidy, muddy kind of texture, so I'm just gonna drop that on. Work it around a little bit. Once it goes off, gives me a good like, crunchy surface to work with. Because rust is rarely smooth, in my opinion. Until that goes off, and then we hit it with some oranges. So once that's dried, you've got a bit of a crispy, crunchy, a bit of texture to it. So painting the top silver, so it kind of looks like it did if you didn't paint it at all. And adding a little bit of a good old riser rust, which is a dry paint. Good old citadel dry paint. Just working it into a palette, working off the excess, or a sponge will do, or a bit of tissue, and just dab it a little bit. Like so. Maybe a bit on the busted surface there. Now this is a pretty basic colour scheme and you can see how fast I am ripping through this piece. But you know, you can take your time. I find if you do it quite fast, an industrial piece looks a bit more realistic. The orange is adding a little bit of colour to it. So just like so, really just attack it. 
that about it. Okay, about so nothing too fancy, just a little bit eye catching. You know, it's not being high maintenance, but you could do. You can have a bit of sprue, you can turn it into a gantry or a walkway, and you could put some yellow and black stripes on it. You can number the gantry so you can have a nice uh, dark looking gantry, quite black, like real gun metal, and write some numbers on it so you know which gantry they're walking across. Or you can keep it rough, generic, quite post apocalyptic, and run down. So that's how I like my terrain. But paint it any way you want. There you go. Something quick and easy in 10 15 minutes to do with sprue. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please hit that like button and please subscribe for more content.